Okay, so 50% of algebra students out there still find this difficult. So what are we talking about? Well, I'm talking about this, and I'm uh, purposely just saying this because I want you to think about what is this? What, what are we talking about here? If you know the answer to that, put that into the comment section. But I can tell you right now uh, that a lot of you are still struggling with this and you need to get this taken care of if you want to be successful in algebra. So uh, the whole point of this video is to try to get you uh, to really understand what this is. And what we're talking about is... Uh, I'm going to give you a chance. Again, if you want to answer this in the comment section before I tell you, uh, but let me go ahead and tell you now. We're talking about composite functions, function composite, and uh, this uh, seems to give a lot of students uh, difficulty. Now, I don't know if it's exactly 50%, but a lot of algebra students out there are struggling. So if you're struggling or you're still confused about composite functions, well, we can uh, fix this. Okay, so stick around for a couple minutes, and we're going to talk about exactly what you need to do uh, when we're talking about uh, composite functions. It's extremely important in algebra. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I've come to the conclusion that all students can be successful in math. I don't care if you think you are weak in math or if you failed math before. I'm telling you right now, all students can be successful, but it requires two things. One, uh, it requires you uh, willing to do the work. Okay, so you got to put in, you know, take notes, do all the homework, etc. But the second thing you need is great math instruction, easy to understand, clear and understandable math instruction, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, uh, in terms of mathematics, I'm going to leave links to all my math help uh, in the description of this video. By the way, if you happen to be preparing for a test, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, a teacher certification exam, I have a wide range of test prep courses along with homeschool courses and notes. You can find uh, uh, information on all of this in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into composite functions, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to kind of check to see uh, how well you know this. All right, it's a little pop quiz here. So... We can't really find a composite function if we don't have the actual functions, right? So here, let's go ahead and give you a problem. Given that f of x is equal to 2x plus 5 and g of x is equal to 3x squared, here I have two functions. I'd like you to go ahead and find the function composite or composite functions. We say this as f of g of x, all right? So if you can do this problem, or if you're like not quite sure you understand function composites, well, our uh, composite functions, here is a perfect little um, pop quiz for you. So pause the video and put your answer right there if you know how to do this. It'll take you all of about 30 seconds if you know what you're doing, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. And uh, basic function composite. I'm telling you right now, uh, functions is a tremendously important topic in mathematics. There's a lot of function operations you need to know. Again, this particular function composite uh, or composite functions gives a lot of students trouble. But beyond this, there's other things you need to know about functions. So again, follow through if you're still struggling with functions in general. Um, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in all my algebra courses. But let's get back to this problem. So uh, what does this mean, f of g of x? Well, let's first of all make sure you understand what it means to just simply evaluate a function. Let me scoot this down here for a second. What if I said find f of 1 for this function here? What does that mean? Well, see this x right here? We're replacing it with the 1. So if I see x right there, I'm going to replace it with a 1. So it's simply just 2 times 1 plus 5, okay? So the way it works with the function is whatever you plug in, if this is x, you're going to replace this x with whatever you plug in and then just simplify. So f of 1 is going to be 2 times 1, which of course is 2, plus 5 is 7. There you go. Super easy. It's not that difficult. Okay, so you need to understand how to evaluate a function um, in order to do a composite function because that's all we're doing. All right, so here, in this case, if f of whatever I'm plugging in right here, just replace this, whatever I'm plugging in. Okay, so let's just make this really uh, clear. Whatever I plug in here, I'm also going to replace and plug in right there. Okay, all right, so what am I going to plug in here? Well, f of g of x says plug in to the function, the g of x function. All right, so that's what we're saying. We're saying plug in the g of f the g of x function into the f function so what are we plugging in again the g of x function 
So we're going to replace this right here with the g of x function. So you're not going to write g of x there, okay? Because uh, uh, g of x, again, is equal to 3x squared. Like I, can, I can write this or I can write this, 3x squared. You're going to write that, okay? So what are we going to plug in here? Uh, the g of x function, which is 3x squared, Okay, so f of g of x is we're plugging in the g of x function. Again, 3x squared is the g of x function. So we're going to plug in right here 3x squared. And what gets students confused is they get they lose track of the bigger function. Okay, so in other words, you got to make sure that it's 2 times the g of x function. So it's going to be 2. This is the g of x function plus 5. Okay, you got to write the rest of the f function, the f of x function there. Okay, so you can see this is 2. We plugged in the g of x function plus 5, but we're just following this f of x function right there. We just plugged in the g of x function, which is, again, 3x squared. So once we have that down, that is f of g of x. Now what we need to do is uh, simplify this, and we will be done. So that's just simply 2 times 3x squared, which is 6x squared plus 5. And there you go. That is f of g of x. That is a composite function or a function composite, and it's not that difficult, okay? If you got this right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus and 100% for being an awesome algebra student. Um, uh, obviously, you have a great math teacher. Maybe you watch uh, some of my YouTube videos. I'm not sure. Anyways, it looks like you know what you're doing, but let's just double check, uh, you know, that you just didn't get lucky on this problem, okay? For those of you right now understand this, you're like, okay, now I get it. Let's go ahead and see if you can handle this next problem here. Okay, this is a little bit more interesting. And here is our new f function. So f of x is equal to x squared plus x plus 1. And we have g of x is equal to 4x plus 1. Okay, so we want you to go ahead, go ahead and find f of g of x. Okay, so let's see if you can do that. And uh, if you can do this right, then you're well on your way of being excellent at composite functions. Okay, so I'm going to go through the solution now. If you still want to work on this, go ahead and pause the video. But let's take a look at what we need to do. Okay, so f of g of x, again, we're going to plug into the f of, uh, f of x function. We're going to place these x's right there with the g of x function. The g of x function happens to be 4x plus 1. So we're going to have a 4x plus 1 squared. That's this right here. Plus this x. That's another uh, g of x function, which is 4x plus 1, right there, plus 1, okay? So there you go. So that's the first thing you need to do is make sure you set up these problems correct, uh, correctly. Before you get going into the algebra, make sure that, okay, everything looks right. You plugged in everything correctly, and now it's just off to the races. So we have to figure out what 4x plus 1 squared is. That's 4x plus 1 times 4x plus 1 plus 4x plus 1 there, plus 1. So 4x plus 1 times 4x plus 1 is 16x squared plus 8x plus 1. If you don't know how to use the FOIL method um, or multiply binomials, then I have additional videos. Again, if you just want to master all this, check out like my Algebra 1 course. I really get heavy duty into all of this. So now we're just going to continue to uh, uh, clean this up. So this is 4x plus 1 plus 1 or 4x plus 2. And then finally... We can write this in standard form. 16x squared, that's an 8x, that's a 4x, that's a 12x. 1 and 2 is 3, and that is it. f of g of x is equal to this, and that is it, okay? Now, let me just say one thing up here real quick. These two functions, let's go back up to here. Okay, these are a little bit easier functions. Um, you can also find or be asked... And you will be asked to find, let's say, for example, g of f of x. It's not always f of g of x. And these are just names of functions. So you're going to have to get, you know, pretty uh, comfortable going the other way. So what does this mean? Well, we're going to plug in the f of x function into the g function. So now we're going the other way. So right here, we're going to plug in this. So g of f of x would be equal to what? I'm not going to do the actual math. It's going to be 3 times, we're going to plug in again that uh, f function, so that would be 2x plus 5, and then we have to square it, okay? So again, this is the f function. We're plugging it into the g function. That's g of f of x. So you're going to be asked to do um, 
uh, both f of g of x and g of f of x, especially when you're checking things for like inverse functions, all this other stuff that you need to know about functions. But anyways, if you got this down, you understand all this, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little 1985 flat top haircut, A plus 100%. That was a pretty uh, cool haircut back in the day. I don't see anyone with flat tops uh, anymore. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, maybe there's a few people wearing them, but that was a popular haircut if you grew back in the 80s. Now all of us that used to wear those haircut, that haircut probably don't have that much hair up there. But anyways, that's pretty cool. Um, that uh, was a cool haircut, just like your ability to do composite functions. Anyways, hopefully you are not uh, no longer confused about composite functions if you were at the beginning of this video. And if that is the case, go ahead and consider smashing that like button and maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos on my channel basic math to advanced math and like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.